med history. Ebola fever is a particularly dangerous viral infection caused by the Ebola virus and occurring with severe hemorrhagic syndrome. The initial clinical signs of Ebola fever include high fever and severe intoxication, cataral phenomena, during the peak period, indomitable vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, hemorrhages in the form of skin hemorrhages, external and internal bleeding are added. Specific diagnosis of Ebola fever is carried out using virological and serological methods. Etiotropic therapy for Ebola has not been developed. A positive effect was obtained from the administration of plasma convalescence to patients. Pathogenetic measures are aimed at combating infectious and toxic shock, dehydration, and hemorrhagic syndrome. Ebola is a dangerous viral disease with a high degree of contagion and a very high mortality rate. It belongs to the group of hemorrhagic fevers and is characterized by a very severe course. This disease was first recorded in 1976 in Sudan and Zaire. Its name comes from the Ebola River in Zaire, where the virus was first discovered. The largest and most serious outbreak of Ebola began in West Africa in March 2014. During this epidemic, the number of cases and deaths exceeded all previous cases. For the first time, the virus crossed not only land, but also water borders, reaching the left in Europe. During epidemic outbreaks of Ebola, the mortality rate reaches 90%. In August 2014, the World Health Organization recognized this disease as a threat to the whole world. Ways of transmission of the Ebola virus. The contact pathway involves direct contact with infected tissues or fluids, blood, urine, saliva, feces, semen. In epidemiological foci, the virus can infect people caring for the sick or preparing the bodies of the dead for burial. Contact transmission is possible only if anti-epidemiological measures are not followed, that is, with direct skin contact with infected biomaterial. It should be noted that the virus is able to penetrate through intact skin. However, the presence of small cracks and wounds on the skin significantly increases the likelihood of infection. Sexual root transmission of the virus is possible through unprotected sexual contact with a patient or a carrier of infection. In people who managed to survive infection, the virus was found in semen and vaginal secretions for a long time, sometimes for several months after recovery. The alimentary route is through the mucous membrane of the gastrointestinal tract. Eating infected foods can cause infection if the food turned out to be contaminated with virus particles during cooking or was infected initially, if we are talking about the meat of monkeys or wild boars infected with the Ebola virus. Airborne droplet pathway, during coughing and sneezing, particles of saliva and sputum containing the virus can cause infection. In this case, the virus may penetrate through the mucous membrane of the nasopharynx. The spread of the Ebola virus is carried out thanks to three consecutive links. The primary carrier, presumably bats of the family of bats and leaf-nosed primates, humans. Moreover, any link in this chain can become a source of infection for humans. Primary infection involves direct human contact with bats. Secondary infection occurs when a person comes into contact with an infected primate or a sick person. Symptoms of Ebola fever. The incubation period for Ebola fever lasts from several days to 14, 21 days. This is followed by a sharp and sudden manifestation of clinical symptoms. In the initial period of Ebola fever, general infectious manifestations prevail. Intense headache in the forehead and occiput neck and lower back pain, arthralgia, pronounced weakness. Body temperature rise to 39 to 40 degrees C, anorexia. Most patients have a sore and dry throat, feeling of a rope or a painful ball, the development of sore throat or ulcerative pharyngitis. With Ebola, abdominal pain and diarrhea occur almost from the first days. The patient's face acquires a mask-like appearance with sunken eyes and an expression of longing. Patients are often disoriented and aggressive. From about five, seven days during the height of the clinical course of Ebola, chest pain and a painful dry cough occur. Abdominal pain increases, diarrhea becomes profuse and bloody, acute pancreatitis develops. From day six, seven, a bark-like rash appears on the skin of the lower half of the trunk and the extensor surfaces of the limbs. Ulcerative vulvitis and orchitis often occur. 
At the same time, hemorrhagic syndrome develops, characterized by hemorrhages at injection sites, nasal, uterine, gastrointestinal bleeding. Massive blood loss, infectious toxic and hypovolemic shock cause the death of Ebola patients at the beginning of the second week of the disease. Ebola can be suspected in people with characteristic clinical symptoms who are in epidemiologically disadvantaged regions of Africa or who have been in contact with patients. Specific diagnosis of infection is carried out in special virological laboratories in compliance with the requirements of increased biological safety. Ebola virus can be isolated from saliva, urine, blood, nasopharyngeal mucus, and other biological fluids by infecting cell cultures, RT-PCR, electron microscopy of skin and internal organ biopsies. Serological diagnosis of Ebola fever is based on the detection of antibodies to the virus by ELISA, Orangia, RSC, etc. Nonspecific changes in the general blood test include anemia, leukopenia, later leukocytosis, thrombocytopenia, in the general urine test pronounced proteinuria. Biochemical changes in the blood are characterized by azotemia, an increase in the activity of transferases and amylase. When examining the coagulogram, signs of hypocoagulation are revealed. Blood CBS, signs of metabolic acidosis. In order to assess the severity of the course and prognosis of Ebola fever, patients may need chest X-ray, ECG, ultrasound of the abdominal cavity, FGDS. Differential diagnosis is carried out with malaria, septicemia, typhus, and other hemorrhagic fevers primarily with Marburg fever, Lassa fever, and yellow fever. Patients may be advised by an infectious disease specialist, gastroenterologist, neurologist, hematologist, and other specialists. Complications. Ebola hemorrhagic fever is complicated by infectious and toxic shock, hemorrhagic and hypovolemic shock. The mortality rate from Ebola caused by the Zaire virus strain reaches almost 90%, and the Sudan strain 50%. The criteria for recovery are considered to be normalization of the general condition of the patient and threefold negative results of virological studies. To stop the spread of Ebola, it is possible to track the contacts of patients, observe individual protection measures, safely bury the dead, and disinfect biological materials from patients with hemorrhagic fevers. Sanitary quarantine control of passengers arriving from Africa has been strengthened at airports in various countries. The contact persons are subject to observation within 21 days. If Ebola virus infection is suspected, the patient is injected with a specific immunoglobulin from the blood serum of horses. Transportation and treatment of Ebola patients is carried out in special isolation boxes. All nursing staff must undergo special training, use barrier protective equipment, special suits, glasses, respirators, gloves, shoes, etc. Recommended for such particularly dangerous infections as plague and smallpox, the patient is provided with strict bed rest and round-the-clock medical supervision. To date, there is no vaccine against Ebola. Experimental samples are being tested in several countries around the world. Treatment is mainly limited to symptomatic measures. Detoxification therapy, fight against dehydration, hemorrhagic syndrome, shock. In some cases, the injection of plasma from recovered people has a positive effect. 